Welcome to the Cube's coverage of KubeCon EU 2024, live from Paris, France. Join hosts Savannah Peterson, Dustin Kirkland, and Rob Strache as they interview some of the brightest minds in cloud native computing. Coverage of KubeCon Cloud Native Con is brought to you by Red Hat, CNCF, and its ecosystem partners. The Cube's coverage of KubeCon EU 2024 begins right now. Good morning, cloud community, and welcome back to spectacular Paris, France. We're here at KubeCon Cloud Native Con, CNCF's flagship European event. My name is Savannah Peterson, delighted to be joined by my fellow analyst, Rob Streche. Rob, did you have any pastries this morning? I did not. I did have a baguette, though. <laughs> you had a baguette this I had, morning? I had a baguette this morning. That was my <laughs> breakfast, so. <laughs> I'm actually a little jealous. I'm that was, it was fantastic. You didn't want to bring a baguette for the rest of us? Uh, I was on the walk. <laughs> oh, I was on the walk. All right, all right, all right. Well, on the I, I, at least I'm, I'm virtually having a baguette right now because we're talking about virtualization on this next panel. Very <laughs> excited to welcome our two guests, Alice and Fabian. Thank you so much for being here. How y'all doing? All good. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Do you like? Is this show a big event for you? Yeah, sure. Yeah. KubeCon is like the the event. <laughs> it is the event. Yeah. Yeah. I, I we're we're also really big, uh, super deep nerd fans. I mean, you were on stage today. Yeah, indeed. Tell us about that. <laughs> Tell us about it. Tell us about that. It's You're on this stage now, and we want We want We want the highlights. That was. You like? I I feel you know it's it's great, right? To have that opportunity and to have like such a great co-speaker who can't be here right now, but like, it's amazing, right? So you it you is. have somebody they've adopted Qbert, it solves a problem to them, and then you can get into such a stage. I mean, it's like. Well, it was it's Goldman wonderful. Sachs who was on was. Share, and, and talking about how they're using uh, KubeVirt to actually move virtualized machines or virtual machines into their Kubernetes environment, which I think is, I kind of talked about it yesterday, how I was surprised we hadn't talked about it, and I totally forgot you guys were coming on today, but now, now we get to talk <laughs> about or it. Or did you forget? Subliminally, I, I think I may, you were definitely teasing hood, this interview I, I, the whole I, time. I may, may have been teasing this interview the whole time, I but it. I think, again, it's such an important uh, topic, I think, and a project in general because of the changes that are going on in the industry with Broadcom buying VMware. There's a lot of service providers, for instance, that are looking for other options for doing hosting of virtual machines and things of that nature because of the contract changes that have gone on underneath there. Do you see a, 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 like a surge of people being interested in Kubert since all of this has started happening? Uh, sure, I mean, even here at, uh, at KubeCon, we got many questions uh, how people can transition from VMware to KubeVirt, if KubeVirt is stable enough to be used in production. So we have seen uh, a lot of interest in the last month, so. I know, I bet you're not surprised by that. I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> so what, what's new with KubeVirt? What's, what's been going on? Um, so, right now, Qvert is uh, like reaching kind of maturity, so we are focusing more in um, clean up the code, uh, get more uh, people involved. So, there has been many uh, initiatives to improve the code base, to um, uh, clarify more the ownership. Um, there has been also a lot of improvement in the user guide. As many people are uh, joining the community. This is, of course, uh, the first entry point uh, for, uh, for yeah. the um, users. As Ali just said, right, so we're working a lot, like, you know, Qbert, we, with Qbert we had a race, right? I mean, we, you know, with Qbert we want to provide, we are providing a virtualization solution based on Kubernetes. And just one addition to what you said about, like, Goldman, like, you know, important is, you know, Kubernetes is becoming the infrastructure, and VMs become one workload that's being run there, right? And Qbert is enabling to do that. So we've been working on Qbert, right, to enable all these features that you expect from, you know, these virtualization systems that are, are there today, and um, we've achieved much of that over the past few years, like some big things like hot plug for CPU memory resources are still, you know, they need to GA. Memory overcommit, higher density, that's something we're working on. But we're switching to, you know, being even more stable, right? We provide, we provide seamless upgrades, but we want to be more stable. We, we're working on, you know, making it easy to maintain, because if you switch to Qbert, you can rely on it. 
right? And that is, that's what we want and have to live up to. So we're changing focus a little bit, while not, I mean, while continuing to focus on innovation as well, right? You know, new features have to go in, but the foundation needs to be solid. Yeah, another interesting thing is, usually virtual machines are hard, they have many options, so we have tried to simplify the deployment, so there is a new feature and... Super important, everyone wants to decrease complexity. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Uh, so for example, we got also many questions about Windows, how to deploy Windows VMs, so you can define actually, um, if you want to run a Windows VM, there is like something called instant types, and this helps user to, to deploy um, a virtual machine, so this kind of template that will set all the options for you. So this is, again, to, to make it easier for user to, to, to deploy VMs. Everyone wants that easy button. We talk about it a lot, yeah. and, and especially when it comes to Kubernetes, especially when we're talking about AI and everything else. You know, you and I were talking about your daughter's senioritis earlier yeah. and, <laughs> and thinking about graduation. Where's the project maturity right now? Fabian, I'm going to go to you on that one. Yeah, so, you know, I think we joined the CNCF incubator Sandbox in 2019 or incubation 2022? 2022, yeah. And um, that was always a good reflection of the project's maturity, I would say. So I think it's just you know the natural next step to now work on graduation. It totally aligns to what we're doing like on a day-to-day -day basis. Like work and stability, finishing the, as I just said before, right? So yes, graduation is definitely something we're working on this year. We're working actively like to reach out to, to end users, to more platform providers, like we have a lot of platform providers who are using Kubernetes and offering Kubert on top as a service or you know, using it by themselves. So we're working with them to simply complete that whole graduation. It includes security reviews, it involves governance, and it involves end users and other adopters. How many contributors are on the project? We have 150 contributors. <laughs> you prepared today, so yeah. you, you know the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm even more about the companies because the company ratio increased over time, yeah. and it's always good for a project, right, to not rest on you know, few companies. So it's great to see that more companies become interested, regularly contribute to Kubert, so that's just great to see. Do you see uh, people contribute, uh, uh, what's, I guess, the ratio between people who are vendors contributing versus non-vendors that are contributing to this, do you think? I would like to take that offline and work with you okay. to, uh, to digest <laughs> the data. That sounds good. I think, like, you know, Kubert, Kubert is for sure very interesting to platform providers, so vendors, right, you could say, and they are for sure, I would say they're more dominant, right, yeah, in our country. Yeah. Yes. But some end users are also contributing, right? Yeah. And are, where, where are kind of the requirements coming from? Is it people saying, hey, this is what we've seen in KVM, this is what we've seen in VMware, these are the things that are missing? How is that working with the community? Um, so, I mean, of course, people coming from traditional virtualization platform, they expect certain feature to work, like for example, um, hot plug, as Fabian mentioned. But we are also getting requirement like from container perspective, like I don't know, like setting certain environmental variables or passing certain kind of files. So it's, I would say it's kind of a mixture, but yeah, a big part of the requirement is for sure coming from virtualization, uh, the virtualization And work. it's leveraging, a guy, I, one of the other keynotes this morning, they were talking about the storage aspect and it was it's leveraging CSI to be the connection back to storage. And is that, you're, are you being able to leverage a lot of the different things that have been done for, you know, things, uh, more ephemeral container types, but for something that needs to be more persistent? Yes, definitely. So we, Qvert, doesn't make any difference so, um, between storage, uh, storage providers. So if you have a CSI plugin, it can work with file system and it can you also work with block devices. Um, so yeah, generally, if you have your CSI plugin, it can perfectly integrate with Qvert. And can I just add something? I think Please. that's true for so many aspects, right? I mean, why did we build Qvert and Kubernetes at, at all, right? Because Kubernetes is providing so much, right? from an infrastructure perspective, CSI, CNI, but also all these other tools, like you know, patterns for observability, patterns for, for our back, right? Policy enforcement, such, uh, that stuff. So that's why we built Kubernetes on top of Kubernetes to leverage it. Why should we reinvent it again for VMs? How can we build such a wonderful ecosystem that we have with the CNCF ecosystem? Yeah. You, we could not build that for VMs only, right? So like by embedding VMs into Kubernetes, 
We can simply benefit from that ecosystem that's providing so much. It's like. I mean, it makes sense. Yes. Everything yes. makes sense. So what's next? What are you going to build next? What are the contributors going to make next? What sort of features can we expect? What's on your roadmap yeah, for this exactly. year? Yeah, exactly. Give us, yeah, give us, give us the preview. Um, so a live update of resources is of course a big topic. So we just added a CPU and memory hot plug. So we were already supporting storage and um, a network interfaces. So we can expect also in the next future to, to, to give to have additional feature in this direction. Do you, do you see different workloads coming to Kubevert that are non-traditional VM workloads, like some of the AI stuff, some of the database stuff would make sense to me, which is not a, I know you can do persistent databases on, and uh, I sat in a Postgres persistent database talk, uh, data on Kubernetes day uh, on Tuesday. Do you see those types of workloads really being driven to Kubevert as well? Go for it. Um, I mean, we really see user using GPUs, so um, we can expect that they want to run AI workloads. Uh, I don't think we have many feedback if which kind of workload runs inside VMs, but uh, yeah, the interest in GPUs is of course there. Yeah, like the end user feedback, like sometimes it's difficult, but I, I know for sure that like this is finding its way into Kubert, right? I mean, in the beginning there was like uncertainty how this behaves. KVM is old, right? Yeah. I mean, it's been used in OpenStack, it's been used in other projects out there for years. So what I want to say is, yes, we see AI mail workloads running in VMs because there's some benefits to it as well. We see tech workstation use cases being does databases, everything. And you know, the nice thing is, it, it's run as before, right? So you get the same stability, the same compatibility that you, you know, have another KVM-based stacks. It's just that you manage it differently, and we see that. I mean, all, like, just to conclude that, like, with all yeah. the preferences and instance types that we've been doing, like Windows, for example, is like a common workload in VMs, and um, it's being used. We have complaints about not being able to automate as much, which is difficult with some operating systems, but that's a good sign, right? Because we see that those workloads get into Kubert. Uh, another interesting use case is deploying Kubernetes in Kubernetes. So Kubert is like the deployment to have uh, maybe additional cluster, nested cluster. So this is also another perfect use case for, for virtualization. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. Actually, I want to dive into the AI side of things. What sort of trends are you seeing in terms of how people are using Kubert to manage those workloads? Um. AI will rule the world. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Enough said, sound bite, <laughs> sound bite sorted. Kubert can be two-sided, right? I think AI is finding its way into, you know, into an operator's daily life. Like, I mean, AI is approaching us from all sides, right? It's helping operators, mm -hmm. it's helping us with data, big data, right, to analyze it. All the large language models, they're about big data. But we also have it as a, as a workload. So I think, like, we will see AI, you know, approaching Kubert from many sides as a workload, but it's from the Kubernetes side. Like, everything that's like AI and integration with Kubernetes, we're expecting it, you know, at least touch Kubert as well to some extent, but we need to see. I'm not aware of anything specific related to Kubert and AI at this moment in time. Do you have any thoughts? Um, I think, as I said, the use of GPUs, uh, really, I think it's the result of the interest in, in AI workload. And uh, I mean, NVIDIA is one of the main contributors to Kubert, so um, definitely people are interested in using AI workload with uh, VMs. I was going to say, they were on stage yesterday talking about the APIs and things of that nature. So there are, is that a big direct input into what, how Kubevert is using the GPUs and the hardware underneath? So a big shout out to them. I mean, they're really taking it really serious. They do a lot about scale and performance in Kubevert. Um, yeah, they have a ZIG scale, right? They're, they're um, driving it, that's great. Um, and yeah, they, they optimize it for their use case, including GPUs. Yeah, so how, how are things go from Kubevert to being in OpenShift virtualization? And what's kind of what are the benefits of that? Because I, I mean, again, you are here from Red Hat, so you can put your Red Hat on for a second, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and talk about that. How, does, how should people think about that and how close is it to Kubevert? Um, so, I mean, usually 
installing and managing Kubernetes is hard. So you can really think uh, Kubernetes as Linux uh, and the same rather to OpenShift. So actually, so OpenShift really gives you the entire package and the installation. So and we work very closely with the OpenShift team. So it's very well integrated. So when you do enterprise, you probably want to have a full solution, and this is the benefit that you get with OpenShift and uh, Qvert uh, and cloud native virtualization. So it's just part of the whole package. Yeah, then. you can install it through the operator hub, uh, and uh, it works like every add-on uh, on from OpenShift. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, like first, it's very close, right? I mean, we for sure like Kubernetes is built like I mean we build it as Red and ship it with OpenShift, um, and it's tied into the ecosystem because the reality is Kubernetes alone and Kubernetes alone you seldomly see it, right? But it's with any other project, right? You need you need that ecosystem, right? You need observability, you need storage, you need networking. And OpenShift, after all, OpenShift by itself is an enterprise Kubernetes platform. That is giving you like this boilerplate, right? To, to focus on what you what is bringing value to the user, right? About running the applications. And OpenShift virtualization is just benefiting from this, right? We have OpenShift as a solid platform and we add virtual, virtual machine support as part of OpenShift virtualization and it ties naturally into what the admin is already doing. Right, so they don't, need, they don't need to reskill or so. They can use what they know, working with Prometheus, right, lo working with Loki. There's nothing they need to learn new excite, yeah, except for working now with the VMs as well. But that's just another workload, nothing nothing. Different. Just another workload. Just I love, another workload. I love, love, love the whole ethos. You've had some great <laughs> sound bites, both of you, today. Last question for you as we wrap up. What do you hope you can say at the next KubeCon that you can't say today? Ooh, good questions. Um, the next KubeCon that we can't say today? Yes. What do you, where do you hope we're progressing, or the project's progressing, or? So definitely getting more contributors, um, that will be a great achievement. Um, I like that. I think seeing that I would, now, switching forward to 2020, it's great to see that finally people realize that Kubernetes can be a, you know, a, it's a compute platform that can be run on bare metal as well. It's not only for application developers, it can also be a tool, and that's fantastic, being on bare metal, used to automate your work. I mean, containers are not just a tool to drive applications. We need to understand, as an administrator, I need to administer my infrastructure, and the term operator is coming from the fact I'm codifying operational knowledge, right? So why can't we codify an administrator's knowledge to operate our infrastructure. So I would love to, I'm expecting, no, I'm looking forward to see that Kubernetes is recognized as such, right, as a compute platform, right, and that is running multiple workloads, so as a tool for administrators as well. I love it, that was great. You're both absolutely fantastic. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you too. Making the time in your busy schedules between keynotes and everything else. And Rob, <laughs> thank you as always sure. for your wonderful insights and questions. And thank all of you for tuning in to our three days of live coverage here at KubeCon, CloudNativeCon, CNCF's biggest European event. My name's Savannah Peterson, here in Paris, France. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news. Mm -hmm.